Hello, um, so I'm Diane Gasolin. I'm a senior software engineer here at Credo, where I've been working for five years. And today we'll talk about recommendation at scale. So before we drill into the details, I'm gonna give like a very quick overview. Many things have been covered by Suju, but just so we remember the vocabulary and we're all on the same page. So this is what we do. We buy inventory at Space Online. We sell clicks that hopefully convert with a big amount of money. And we take the risk instead of our clients. We don't wanna sell clicks that don't convert. So we work with advertisers, a couple of examples here. Uh, they will provide us catalog, all the product data. They will provide all the browsing event, everything that happened on their website. And they will set their campaign. They can have several types of campaign. It can be retargeting. Like they want to target users they already know that have already been on their website. They want just to make sure that they buy on their website, not the competitors. And re uh, also acquisition campaign where the goal is here to have new users that have never been on your website where Credio may have some data that they don't to target the right users. And we work with publishers on the other side, whether Channel, New York Times, where they will send up the request, we'll decide if we bid or not. In case we bid, we'll give the banner to them that they, we want them to display. And in case there's a click, we'll charge a CPC cost per click to our clients. One of the most exciting thing at Credio is all the data we can play with. So in terms of catalog, we have 16K clients with an average of 1 million products. We receive about 60 billion events a day, so all this browsing data that happened to all of our advertisers. And we receive some requests for a good recommendation about 8 billion a day. So whenever we request, we receive a request, first it goes through arbitration, that Suju mentioned, where we'll choose for which campaign, which partner we're gonna display the ad for, and the best bid price, depending on how likely we think the person is gonna click or convert after click. Then after there's a win, this is when we go to the recommendation service, where the goal is to select the best products for this given campaign, and those products will be rendered into a banner, HTML, we're starting to do video as well. So now let's look at a bit more about how recommendation work. So as we've seen, as input, we get a user, user ID, and a partner in campaign for this. And the goal is to get a couple of products. In average, we are being asked for five products, but it depends on the size of the ad placement. We may want more or less products. We receive, from the recommendation point of view, so after the bid has been win, we receive about 100K uh, query per second. We should reply under 15 milliseconds. And for this, we have 1,000 servers that just do recommendation and that are worldwide in all our data center. We have 3 billion uh, unique like UIDs, so it's a device ID. We have a critical uh, ID graph where we try to compute among all these IDs who are the same people because each of you probably has several devices, a phone, a computer, a tablet. We want to make sure that we understand that it's the same user. Uh, in the easiest point of view, we believe there is uh, two billion uh, unique users. Because we cannot have user to product recommendation right away, the way we represent user is through all the product he has interacted with. So we look at browsing data, and for each user, we'll store for each of the partner he has been to, the product he has viewed, the product he has purchased, put into his basket, and listing. When you search for a product and you have got a listing of product, is that what it is? And we also store long-term features. So we have a job that goes through all the past history, group it by user, and compute long-term features that are global or for each partner, like your favorite color, favorite categories, your type of budget. And for this given category, do you is your intent more like high-end product, lower-end product, these kind of things. This is also a way for us to do offline recommendation that may need too much time to be done online. 
But the problem is, if I take out the biggest partner, he has 200 million products. So if you were to evaluate online all the similarities, all, all the products that, ha that are in the browsing uh, data of this user and compare it with all the available products of this partner, it will be really too big and we cannot assess this in 10, 15 milliseconds. So the way we do is that offline, we compute some sources of products. So some product to product recommendations. So we're gonna see how we build this thing offline. And it doesn't display. Um, so imagine you have these users that have seen several items. This person has seen shoes, this one has bought like gloves and hats. They also own shoes, et cetera, all these items. Through collab collaborative filtering, we'll compute some similarities, products that have been seen, seen together, and complementarities, products that have been bought together. But we could plug also other sources of similarity and complementary that are not collaborative filtering and use a prediction model offline that will be able to take the best from all the sources. And this prediction model is the same as for a CTR prediction. It's a linear regression because it scales again and it will be trained on uh, display um, data, display click sales data as well. So in the end, we'll compute for each item that has been seen in the last 90 days, all the products that were seen together and the one that we're seeing most often together. Same thing for buy-by uh, -buy events. And push us um, complementary and similarities to memcache online, so it's a very fast and efficient cache to retrieve the data. And if you can look at the, the values, there's a lot of entry and it requires a lot of storage. And this will be pushed to each of our data center where we do all the display requests. Apart from complementary and similar products, sorry, we also compute global best of and best of per category or token. So, um, as you know by now, we have a catalog that we enrich with some information that we compute ourselves, like the universal category, brand, gender, image safety, etc. Where we have this rich catalog that we combine with all the browsing data that we have. So we get like an enriched user timeline for each user, everything he has seen, and we can compute a best of. So we have a best of of views that are for all the partners. We have it specific to partners. We have it per category, per universal categories, per brand, per keyword. And all this best of is also a nice way to reach those users that we want uh, to, um, reach through the acquisition campaign, like users that a partner has never seen, if we can know the intent that this user is interested in this particular brand or this particular category, and this partner he has never been to also sell this brand and categories, then this might be a good fit. And again, all those sources are pushed to memcache. So what happens online? So imagine you receive a request from Macy's, one of their retargeting campaign. And at the history, the user has seen like a pair of shoes, a winter hat, and one shirt. And you've been asked to recommend three products for this. So the first step will be to get all the resource, uh, the request sources from this memcache that we've um, pushed data into just before. And We'll gather candidates from different sources like historical, uh, similarities, global best of, best of by categories, and we'll evaluate all those products. Um, so for each product, we'll have 15, 25 similarities, complementarities. So here you can see how we can reduce the space of whatever we can evaluate online. So now that we have these candidates, we'll do a pre-filtering with a pretty naive uh, prediction model where the features are very simple. Uh, they're um, 
will be about user and context and the global features. And then we will enrich the products with more catalog data. We cannot store everything in the raw sources because there will be a lot of duplicate data. So we have to do this second call where we retrieve information about that catalog and then we can do better prediction and better scoring. At that point, we have features coming from the catalog. We have user feature, we have publisher features, context like time of the day, et cetera, that will help us do a better scoring. So for each of the products, we have the data, we can compute some score, and after, we will rank those products. And one last time, get like the really most up-to-date information because price may vary from time to time. The price that we had in cash may be not good. Maybe in the meantime, the stock has changed and we don't want to put into the banner or something that has no stock anymore because even if there's a click, there's not going to be a purchase after it. So we do this last call where um, we have a couch base um, storage and in the end, we have the three top products that will be put into the banner and the banner will be rendered like this example. So to summarize, offline we have some prediction models that will help us build some sources, products, like one product to 25 products, um, similarities or complementarities. These will be used online again where they'll be rescored with all the online features that we can have to produce a banner that will generate click sales and will help us have more logs to train our models. So how do we evaluate both our models online and offline? Um, so of course, we do online A-B testing. We split the population of users into and use a different model for both of them. It works, it's a source of truth, but the problem is that it's very onerous it can go wrong very fast. And with the amount of requests that we have, if we have a bug for five minutes, that would be a lot of money uh, lost. Also, tests are long. Like Suju said, it takes five days to have a sale. So in order to know if it not only clicks well, but uh, brings a lot of sales, you need to run it for a long time. So you cannot have like a lot of A-B tests at the same time, or otherwise your confidence interval will be even smaller. The code, of course, has to be um, prod ready. If there's a bug, like I said, it will be a lot of failure. And it's heavy in infrastructure because you need to fit two models in memory. So if you have two, it's okay. You cannot do multiple uh, at a time. And it doesn't take uh, into account the long-term effects. We uh, are having some metrics to try to predict what will happen uh, if the performance goes bad for one of the um, of the partner, but we don't want to find that online. So this is why we have a test framework where we can replay offline logs, replay what, what happened in production before, uh, where we got a fast replay time. The problem is, of course, we'll be only able to validate on product that, have, that are in the log and that have been shown before. So exploration is costly. We're doing a bit of shuffling in, online to get more variety in our data. We cannot do too much because it's money in case we're bad at it. Um, but this helps us to make sure we're not completely mistaken. And we're having some metrics that are better and better to be able to evaluate offline. One of them is trying to predict what will be the long-term intent of a partner. If we believe that for the same number of clicks, the numbers of cells will reduce for this given partner. We're trying to predict what will be exchanged. The partner chooses a CPC, like how much money you give us per click. So for the same money, if it gets less purchase, maybe it will lower a CPC and give us less money. So for us, it will also impact the number of money we made, but it will also impact how we do our bid because we get less money then we cannot afford to pay too much for this impression. So we don't, won't get the same time as inventory of before, and it will impact 
our um, numbers of clicks and sales. So we're also trying to have a feature there to capture this long-term advertiser spent uh, they will have at Credo. And also there's been a paper written uh, by some Credo's about offline A-B testing and benchmark benchmarking some predictors to find the one that um, correlate the best, best with what happens online. So you've got the URL here, otherwise offline A-B testing, Credo, you type that online, you will find it. I think it's probably on the Credo labs as well. Um, so we've been doing a lot of ex ML experiments. Um, the problem is always the same. Um, logistic regression scales very well. It's hard to have something that is as fast as this. But some experiments that have been done are Prod2Vec. So it's actually a word to vec where the words are a product and the sentences are a shopping session. So the goal here is given a shopping session, what would be the next product that we will see? Because before, the way it is is that the recommendations are quite independent from each other, which is a bias and it probably not is the case. And also, if you notice like online, we score product independently, but probably it's not really independent and you could have scoring for a banner instead of specific product. So here it was using a neural network and uh, can nearest neighbors for a similarity. It has been rolled out on some of the high uh, spending partners, but because of infrastructure cost, um, it was not scalable to the entire platform. Another ongoing project is uh, user clustering. So if you remember the graph where we were building the uh, best of, we're just adding an extra step where from the enriched user uh, browsing data, we will compute user clusters and then do a best of per cluster. So the user are embedded using the cross-partner metadata, so everything from the universal catalog, universal category, brand, token, gender, etc., and using a k-means. Um, so there's ongoing experiment to see what is the best way to do this k-mean, which metric should we use. Uh, I think the uh, standard um, IDFTF was not really working and it's really in progress. And then the cluster, so we'll take from all the users of a cluster take the best products from their browsing history. Um, so in case you want to play with some data, I uh, don't know if you're aware, but we've published one display click data of uh, one tera that you can play with. Uh, it has 4 billion of observation. It's available on Microsoft Azure. Uh, you can download it. So again, it's available like click logs through, you type this through the Credo Labs, you find it, and in Azure as well. If you have any questions, you're uh, free to come talk to me during the networking session. I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.